Hello everybody, welcome to the next game in the 2015 Stratomatic Demolition League. We are in, still in Series 4, and but now we are at Game 4, or Matchup 4 I should say. And that's the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the Seattle Mariners. Next video will be Matchup 5, Cincinnati at Tampa Bay. So right now we have Arizona <clears throat> against Seattle. Let's look at the starting, line, uh, starting pitchers for both teams. King Felix, Felix Hernandez is on the mound for Seattle. And for the Diamondbacks, Ruby De La Rosa. Did these rest rolls in advance to try to save a little bit of time. And on the rest rolls, Tuffy Gosowich, the catcher, and Yosemite Tomas, the third baseman, have to rest for Arizona. For Seattle, Seth Smith, the right fielder, and Dustin Ackley, the first baseman in the previous game, had to rest. Arizona's three and six. Mariners are six and three. Lineup for Arizona, Enciarte, Peralti, Goldschmidt, Pollock, Lamb, Trumbo, the DH, Ahmed, Owings, and Pacheco. And for Seattle, Jackson, Cano, Cruz, Seeger, Morrison, Gutierrez, Miller, Ruggiano, and Zanino. So let's see if I can get everybody in there. Hopefully that works. And where everything fits. Okay. So let's get this game going without too much other hype or fanfare. Uh, let's see here. I usually like to do the bullpen at bench, so I guess I'll go ahead and do them. On the bench for the Mariners, besides the two guys that had to rest, Smith and Ackley, you've got Willie Bloomquist and the backup catcher, Jesus Sucre. So they have four bench players to go along with the nine position players. That's 13 position players. With the 12 pitchers, you have five stars, which means you have seven relief pitchers. The two lefties, Charlie Furbush and Joe Bimel. Right-handers, Tom Wilhelmsen, Danny Farquhar, Carson Smith, Mark Lowe, and Fernando Rodney. For the Diamondbacks on their bench, besides Gosowich and Tomas, who had to rest, we have Cliff Pennington and Aaron Hill. And in the bullpen for the Diamondbacks, there are two left-handers, Andrew Chafin and Oliver Perez, with right-handers Addison Reed, David Hernandez, Randall Delgado, Daniel Hudson, and the closer, Brad Ziegler. So that's out of the way. I do have the game up on the computer, so I can score and give you the stats as we go along. And first thing I want to do is make sure everything is copacetic which right now it is not. So let's get everything lined up. Make sure we can fit the nine innings in, which it looks like we did. Zanino fits, so looks like everything is good there. All right, so I think we're okay. There's a big glare coming in, but it's not on the score sheet, fortunately enough. It's almost in my face, but we'll try to get around it. But it won't affect the video, hopefully. At least I don't believe it will. All right, so Ender Enciarte Gonna lead things off for the Diamondbacks. We've got our dice here ready to go. One last final check, and then I can have a seat. Looks like everything is about as good as it's gonna get. All right, so Enciarte will lead things off. He's hitting 346 in 26 at bats. No homers and three runs driven in. King Felix on the replay so far. He's had two starts. He's one and one with a 2.57 ERA. 14 innings pitched, 10 hits, no walks, and 10 strikeouts. So that's pretty good in 14 innings to have no walks and 10 strikeouts. So here's NC Arte. Right fielder to lead off, 1-7. That's a 1-18 single. And it is a leadoff single for NC Arte. And NC Arte has stolen uh, two bases. He stole 21 on the season in real life. He stole two so far in the replay. He is an A stealer. Which means he's a 15. Being held makes him a 13. Catcher arm is Zanino, who is a minus one and make him a 12. So 1 to 12, 60% chance they're going to take a shot at it and see if they can get that steal and get a runner into scoring position. 1 to 12 will do it. And he does it. So a stolen base for Enciarte. And the D-backs have something cooking early on against King Felix. Runner to second, nobody out, and Enciarte will have to be held. David Peralta, the left fielder, steps to the plate. And Peralta, on the replay, 
is hitting only 211, struggling in 38 at bats, one homer, four driven in. 6 7, and that is a strikeout. It's a big strikeout there. One away. I did forget the injury chance rolls. King Felix, if he rolls a 6 12, he is a, has a chance at an injury. De La Rosa has no chance of injury. So the only chance we have is we roll a 6 12 with King Felix, then he may be injured. Here's Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt sitting even 400. He's really cooking. 30 at bats, he's got 400 for a batting average. Three homers and eight driven in. 2-5, and that is a strikeout. So King Felix gets yet another strikeout. Not out of the woods yet, though. He's got to deal with A.J. Pollock, who's the hottest hitter on the team. Even hotter than Goldschmidt. Pollock, well, he's about the same. He's also hitting 400. He's got three homers, nine runs driven in. First base is open. You could walk Pollock and pitch to Lamb, but I think King Felix is feeling it, and he wants to take care of business himself. 1-3. That's a ground ball back to King Felix. That's going to end the inning. So a promising start for the D-backs. Ends up not doing anything. And after half an inning to play, it's Arizona nothing. Seattle coming to bat. And Ruby De La Rosa on the real season was 14-9 with a 4-6-7 ERA. On the replay... Ruby De La Rosa is 0-2 with 11.57 earned run average. Nine innings pitched, 13 hits, three walks, 11 strikeouts, but most alarming, six home runs in just nine innings of pitching over two games. So definitely susceptible to the long ball. And Seattle, particularly middle of the order here, Cano, Cruz, and Seeger can certainly oblige him with long balls. Leading off is Austin Jackson hitting 303. No homers and one driven in. 2-9, and that's a fly to left, so one away. Good idea to keep the leadoff man off the bases. One down. And that will send up Robbie Cano, Robinson Cano. Normally a number three hitter, but with Seth Smith out, who's normally the number two hitter, everybody bumps up a spot. Cano on the replay hitting 243, one homer and three driven in. That's a 110, and that's a ground ball to first. Goldschmidt will take it himself. Two down. Two up and two down for the designated hitter, Nelson Cruz. Cruz hitting 242, two homers, four driven in. 212, and that's a low max. Nobody else is on base, so it's simply only one out to end the inning. So De La Rosa gets through that first inning without any damage. But we've got eight innings to go, so anything can happen. Top of the second, no score. And for the Diamondbacks, it'll be Jake Lamb, third baseman. Jake Lamb, unbelievably, Jake Lamb is hitless. He's 0 for 24. Two walks and nine strikeouts. Hoping he can get right here against King Felix, but it's not looking good. 4-4, four, four, and that's a fly ball center field X. That's Austin Jackson, who is a three center fielder. Three and a nine. We'll see if he can get to that or whether we go to an error check. Three and a nine. That's an error check. Austin Jackson's error rating is a six. And that's an 11. E6 and an 11 is a two base error on Austin Jackson. So Jake Lamb still hitless, but at least he gets on base courtesy of a two base error on Austin Jackson. So uncharacteristic of Austin Jackson. He's been a good fielder, but not now. Here's the designated hitter, Mark Trumbo. And Trumbo, in limited duty, 18 at-bats, he is hitting 222, two homers and two runs driven in. So it's only two hits, apparently. Oh, it's four for 18, I think, is the way it works out. So two of his four hits are home runs. 2-9, and that's a strikeout. That's something Trumbo does a lot as well. One down. Lamb runs as a 13, so he will be held at second base. Forgot to mention that part. Nick Ahmed steps to the plate, shortstop. And Ahmed hitting 316 and only 19 at bats. Two homers, four RBI. He was injured in the beginning of the season. 1 8, and that's a strikeout again. So King Felix trying to pick up his teammate, Austin Jackson, by striking out these two guys. And now there's two downs up to Chris Owings, the second baseman. 
And Chris Owings hitting only a 111, three for 27 on the season. One homer and his, that produces only run batted in. 1-7, he's going to strike out. So King Felix comes back and strikes out the side after that two base error and tells the Diamondbacks, you'll get nothing to like it. We go to the bottom of the second. No score from Safeco Field. Leading off for the Mariners will be Kyle Seeger, third baseman. I think I ought to have these up a little higher so you can see them. Kyle Seeger at third base. He's only hitting 172. A homer and five driven in. 3-8, and that's a walk. Leadoff walk to Kyle Seeger. Leadoff walks can come back to bite you. They just seem to do that. Seeger will not be held as a D-stealer. Here's Logan Morrison, the first baseman. Morrison hitting 273, one homer. It's his only run batted in. 1-6, and that's another walk. So back-to-back -back walks from De La Rosa as he has lost a little bit of control of the strike zone. Getting squeezed by the home plate umpire. Franklin Gutierrez is up. He's Normally you think about a bunting here, but he's not a very good bunter, so let him swing away. He's in limited duty. He's only hitting a buck 82 and 11 at bats. No homers or runs driven in. 6-4. Catcher X. Catcher in this case is Pacheco, and Pacheco is only a 4. 4 and a 4 from the catching position. A four and a four is a wild pitch and a pop out. So it's a wild pitch that's going to move the runners up. They will both advance. And then it's a pop up to the catcher for out number one. So the out was recorded, but both runners moved up. So it kind of acted as a pseudo sacrifice bunt. Brings up Brad Miller, infield for the Diamondbacks. They're going to play in. They think it's going to be a low-scoring game. So despite the fact that Brad Miller has two plus signs here that could hurt him, 3-4 and 3-10, they're going to take a chance and play in. Uh, Miller on the replay is hitting only 231, two homers, four driven in. 1-7, and it doesn't matter where they're playing because that's extra. That's either a double or a single. 1-6 to six is a double, but it ends up being a single, two stars. And that will score both runs. So a two-run single from Brad Miller gives the Mariners a 2-0 lead. And the wild pitch certainly factored into one of those runs. But Brad Miller, hit big two-run single. Mariners lead it 2-0. Here's Justin Ruggiano. He's at limited duty. Just four at bats. He's one for four. This is a 250 average. No homers and one driven in. Miller at first base now is a beast dealer. He will be held. 310, and that's a ground ball third base A. It's an around the horn 5 4 3 double play to end the inning. But damage done on the RBI two run single, rather, by Brad Miller. At the end of two, it is Seattle two and Arizona nothing. And King Felix has been given a two run lead to protect. And Jordan Pacheco is your batter. He's in there because Gus Gusowitz had to rest. Pacheco in limited duty and 11 at bats is hitting a buck 82. Two for 11. No homers or runs driven in. Three six and it's a fly to left out number one. Pacheco is retired. That'll flip the order over to Enciarte. Ender in Ciarte. Single and stole second his first time up, but was stranded there. 6-7. Struck him out. Strikeout number six for King Felix. Here in just the third inning. He's got the K pitch going. Here's Peralta. 6-8. That's a walk. First walk issued by King Felix. A two-out walk. So that might not come back to bite him. We shall see. Peralta is a C stealer, but he's not going to go anywhere. Not when you got Goldschmidt and Pollock coming up. Don't want to run yourself out of an inning. 5 9, ground ball shortstop X. That is Miller. And Miller is a 3. 3 and a 13, probably going to be okay with that. 3 and a 13 is a ground ball C, which is good enough. So it's a 6 3 ground out to end the inning. And King Felix has made it three shutout frames.
start this ball game. Bottom of the third we go, and it's Mike Zanino, the catcher, number nine hitter, stepping to the plate. Zanino is 0 for 15, so he's a zero. 0 for 15, one RBI, no walks, nine strikeouts, so he's really struggling as well. 3-7, he will continue to struggle, ground ball to short, one down. That'll send us to the top of the order. And Austin Jackson. Five nine, and that's a ground ball to third. Lamb makes the play, two down for Robbie Cano. Cano grounded to Goldschmidt his first chance. 6-4. That's catcher X again. Pacheco again is not very good. He is a 4. 4 and a 5 as a catcher. 4 and a 5. 4 and a 5 is a wild pitch and pop-up, but nobody's on base, so it's simply going to be a pop-up to end the inning. And we're through 3 here in Seattle. With the score 2-0 Mariners, King Felix, back out, doing very well for himself now. A.J. Pollock, the batter. Pollock grounded right back to King Felix his first time. 6-8, and this time it's a chance for a single. 1-15 to 15 will be a single. And it is, 14 just fits, so A.J. Pollock continues his hot hitting with a base hit. And he's definitely a threat to steal as a double-A stealer. As a double-A stealer, A.J. Pollock starts out as a 17. Being held minus 2 makes him a 15. Catcher Zanino is a minus 1 arm, makes it a 14. That's still good enough odds for me. 1 to 14, Pollock's going to try it. And he makes it in there, another stolen base. So Pollock steals second base, gets himself into scoring position. But now you got the struggling Jake Lamb, who is now 0 for 25. But he's got to be due at some point, right? Pollock definitely being held at second. 4-5. That's a ground ball second base A. That will move the runner to third with the ground ball to the right side. That's the only... I decided to go ahead and... Um, make that one alteration on the advance to where it just makes sense uh, baseball-wise. So he does advance to third with one out for Mark Trumbo. Infield, of course, is back because they need outs. 6-3, and that's a ground ball pitcher X. King Felix is a 2-E-15. 2 and an 11. Definitely going to the error check, which he is an E-15. And a 12. E15 for a pitcher and a 12 is a one base error on King Felix. So Felix boots it and that will allow Pollock to score. E1. No RBI given because if he feels that, Pollock would have had to hold. So no RBI to, to give there. But the run scores, which is more important. It's now a two to one game. Trumbo not running well at all will not be held. Here's Ahmed. 5-7. Ground ball second base X. That's Robbie Cano. He is a 3. 3-11. Three and 11. It's going to go to his error rating, which is an E6. So an E6 for Cano. And an 8. E6 and an 8 is a ground ball A, which is a double play. 4-6-3 to end the inning. But one run comes in, thanks to the boot by Felix Hernandez, so he just kind of hurt himself. Can't No one to blame but himself on that one. But he still holds a 2-1 to one lead. So I guess things aren't all bad if you're King Felix. You lead it 2-1, to one, and now your big boys are coming back up to, to bat, try to get you some more runs. Here's Nelson Cruz. 3-8 for Cruz, struck him out. Big strikeout for De La Rosa. Keep the lead runner off the bases. But it brings up another dangerous 
hitter in Seeger, although he is struggling early. But on the season, he was a really good hitter. 5-4 is a ground ball shortstop X. That's Nick Ahmed. And Ahmed is a 2. 2 and a 9. Could be a play. Could go to an error check. Yep, it's going to be an error check. Ahmed is an E18. E18 and a 10 for shortstop. E18 and a 10 is a ground ball A. So it's good enough. He makes the play. 2 down. And that will send up Logan Morrison. Five seven, and that's a strikeout. De La Rosa gets him out. Innings over. Tight one here in Seattle. After four complete, it's two to one Mariners. And anybody's game. King Felix back out. We'll be facing Chris Owings to start the fifth. It'll be Owings, Pacheco, and Enciarte. 2-6, and that's a pop-up to short. Easy play for Miller. One down. And Jordan Pacheco, the catcher, will be up. And Pacheco flew to left his first chance. 6-11. Remember, 6-12 is the injury check, so 6-11 is fine. It's a single. So Jordan Pacheco gets a one-out single. Let's see if he can get something started. He's a D stealer. He will not be held. He will not go anywhere. And Enciarte, the batter. One for two. Five, seven. Ground ball second base X. That's Cano. He's a three. Three and a nine. It's a second baseman probably going to an error check, which it is. Cano is an E6. E6 and an 11. E6 and 11 is a ground ball A. Another double play. 4-6-3. Second consecutive inning. The Mariners have turned the double play to thwart a Diamondback rally. So that's going to do it for the D-backs here in the top of the fifth, courtesy of the 4-6-3 double play. We go to the bottom of the fifth, still 2-1. And Ruby De La Rosa. Ruby De La Rosa is still out there. He'll be facing Franklin Gutierrez, Brad Miller, and Justin Ruggiano, numbers 6, 7, and 8 in the lineup. 5-4, ground ball to short. Ahmed's a 1. I'm sorry, he's a 2. Ahmed's a 2. That's an 11 going to the error check, which is an E18. E18 and a 4 for a shortstop. E18 and a 4 is a one-base error. So Ahmed boots it. The boot by Ahmed. That is the first error by Arizona. Seattle's already had two. Gutierrez is not a good runner. Not a good stealer, I should say, so he will not be held. Brad Miller, the batter. 6-7, and that is a ground ball second base A. 4-6-3 double play. Arizona says to Seattle, if you can turn two, we can turn two. And that wipes the bases clean. And sends up Justin Ruggiano. 2-7, and he grounds it to first. Since it's a C, it'll be a 3-1 put out, officially. As Goldschmidt flips to De La Rosa. And five innings are in the books. It's a tight one. It's a 2-1 Mariner lead. Start the top of the sixth. Felix Hernandez fatigue is a number seven. But De La Rosa next inning... He's a six, so his fatigue will come up next inning. Leading off for the D-backs, it'll be the top of the order for Peralta. I'm sorry, to be the number two man, Peralta. One nine, and he strikes out. So King Felix, yet another strikeout. K cards are coming out early and often here in Seattle. Here's Goldschmidt. Three, four, it's another strikeout. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by King Felix. Looks like he's getting stronger instead of getting tired. As he is with the first two, and not just any two, but two of their better hitters. That's going to bring up Pollock. Three, six, and that's another strikeout. So he struck out the side. 
did King Felix as he just took care of business here in the top of the sixth. We'll look at his numbers for the game. King Felix has now struck out nine Arizona Diamondbacks in six innings. So he's got it rolling. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Still a two-to-one game. This is De La Rosa's point of weakness inning. He'll be facing Mr. Zero, Mike Zanino, 0 for 16 on the season. Looking for that magical first hit. 2-2. Two -two. He'll get a walk. He won't get a hit, but he will get a leadoff walk. So he's aboard on a leadoff walk. He's not going to be held, obviously. Jackson's a C bunter. We dropped to a D bunter, so we're going to have him swing away against De La Rosa. 2-8, and that's a 1-17 single. One star, and that's what it is. First and second now, nobody out. And De La Rosa, one base runner allowed away from being fatigued. And he's got to deal with the heart of the order. Cano, Cruz, and Seeger coming up. Bullpen activity for the Diamondbacks. They do have left-hander. The left-hander, Andrew Chafin, is loosening in the pen, just in case. Here's Cano. Nobody's being held on. 6-7. That's a ground ball, second base A. Another 4-6-3, double play. Runner Zanino does take third, but that kind of took the starch out of any rally. And that is the third double play the Mariners have bounced into. That brings up Nelly Cruz with two outs and a runner at third. 5-12. And that's a fly to left. That's going to end the inning. So De La Rosa pitches around all that mess. Keeps the score 2-1. to one, And he has the double play ground balls to think about, to think about that. We go to the seventh. It is still 2-1. to one. And Fernandez, or Hernandez rather, his point of weakness inning coming up. And poor Jake Lamb, 0 for 26. So he's, you know he's got to be due. He's got a great column, 1. Just have to find it. But he's found Felix, 4-3. That's a ground ball to second. Cano puts it away. And now he is 0 for 27. They may just need to bench him and give him a game off and... Uh, Maybe get him to recoup or something. I don't know. Maybe break him out of that slump somehow. Here's Trumbo. 3-7 for Trumbo. 1-4 is a double. Anything else, Jackson will run it down in center field. And Jackson is able to track it down. Two down. So King Felix rolling along. Nice outing here going for seven innings at least. Here's Ahmed. 2-9 for Ahmed. Whoa. Whoa. 1 to 7, we got a tie game. 8 to 20, it's going to just be a double. And that's a double, so he kept it in the ballpark, keeps the score tied. But the runner is in the tying run is in scoring position. Nick Ahmed runs pretty well. He runs at a 15, so he will be held at second base. And Chris Owings, the batter, really really struggling at 103. Would they consider a pinch hitter at this point? In a critical situation, Owings is 0 for 2. They do have Cliff Pennington. So you know what? They're going to make the move. They're going to take a chance. They're going to bring in Cliff Pennington to pinch hit for Chris Owings, and he'll stay in the game to play second base. They need a spark right here against King Felix. So Pennington will be coming on for Owens. He's a switch hitter. That's why he's in there. They want to play the percentages and get that lefty against the righty, or in this case, a switch against the righty. Pennington on the replay in just 14 at-bats is hitting 214 with one home run, but 214 is better than zero. 4-11, and look at this, a 1-13 home run chance. Well, it would have been 1-12 here, but 1-13 is a home run. It would be a two-run shot that would give Arizona the lead, 14 to 20, and the right fielder Gutierrez runs it down. It is gone. How about that? A pinch hit home run for Cliff Pennington, but he does have weak power, so that takes the home run away. It's merely going to be a single, not going to be a home run, but it's two stars and it will tie the game. So Pennington unable to get the home run because of the weak power, but... 
the home run didn't come to fruition, but the single certainly did. And just for kicks and giggles, Chris Owens also had weak power, so he couldn't have hit a home run either. But it's a two-run single, or not a two-run single, a two-base advancement single to tie the game at two. Two to two. And with all this happening with two outs and the bases empty, a double by Ahmed and now a pinch hit single by Pennington brings up Pacheco. And Pennington at first base runs to the C, so he will have to be held. 1-6 for Pacheco. 1-19 to is a single. It's only a one-base advancement, so Pennington will have to stop at second base on the single by Pacheco. And now King Felix. King Felix is now according to the computer, considered tired. And Ender Enciarte is coming up. They are going to pull King Felix, I do believe. Or do they leave? No, you know what? He's their ace. You're going to leave him in there whether he's tired or not. They're going to trust him to get this last out against Enciarte. 2-9, and that was a bad move. Although lefties would have got a hit also, but 2-20 to 20 is a double. That is a double for Enciarte, so we know Pennington's going to score. We'll have to check on Pacheco, and that's going to be it for King Felix for sure now. Maybe one, went one batter too many. Pacheco was not being held. He's a 12, not being held is a 13, gives him one's a 13. There are two outs, makes it a 15. The double went to center. When it's not differentiated, it's assumed to go to center, which means Austin Jackson's a zero arm, so no effect there. So we're looking at a 1-15 to 15 for Pacheco to score. And he does. So Pacheco, it's a two-run double for Ender Enciarte. Two-run double. And that makes it a 4-2 to two Diamondbacks lead. And that's going to be it for King Felix. He's going to have to leave. And now left-hander Joe Bimel will be on. As he's going to face the left-hander Peralta. So King Felix's day is done. The win has now been taken away. It's now 4-2. to two. And Joe Bimel coming on. In real life, he was 2-1 with a 3.99 ERA and a save. On the replay, in limited duty, he's only had one inning pitched. He's 0-0, but he does have a save. One inning pitched, three hits, and two strikeouts. A little bit inconsistent there, but again, it's only been he's only had one inning, so not many chances to check the stats. But right now, here's lefty on lefty 2 7, and that's a strikeout. So Bimel came in and did his job, did Joe Bimel, and he's usually a, a you know one or two pitcher guy, so he's going to go the one third of an inning. That's going to be it. King Felix is going to go six and two thirds. Face 28 batters. And right now, unless the Mariners rally, he is subject to be the losing pitcher. And Cliff Pennington will stay in the game to play second base for the Diamondbacks. And De La Rosa is going to stay in there for now. He's been given a 4-2 to lead. So they're going to let him see if he can stay in there. If he struggles at all, they will be looking for Andrew Chafin out of the bullpen. But right now, they're going to stick with De La Rosa. With that 4-2 to two lead. Seeger, the batter. 5-3. That's a single to center field. So it might not be lasting too much longer. That'll bring up Logan Morrison. And I think that's going to be it for De La Rosa. So they try to get him into the 7th. It didn't work. He goes 6+. Plus and he faces 22 batters. And now Andrew Chafin, the lefty, is on for Arizona. So De La Rosa, his time is complete. And Andrew Chafin, in real life, in the 15 season, he was 5-1, and 2.76 ERA, and two saves. Let's see what he is on the replay once we make that change on the computer. Andrew Chafin. Chafin is 0-0. With a 5.79 ERA, no saves, 
Five innings pitched, four hits, three walks, five strikeouts, and one home run allowed. But he's in there for a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup with Logan Morrison. Seager, the Steeler, will not be held. 5-3 is a ground ball pitcher X. He's a 3-E-20. 3-18. 3-18 for a pitcher. 3-18 is a ground ball C, so it does advance the runner. It's going to be a 1-3 ground out. It acts like a sacrifice bunt, pretty much. So the tying run... Still at the plate in Franklin Gutierrez. Gutierrez now facing Chafin. 6-8, and that's a strikeout, and I need to check the injury to make sure that he's not susceptible to 6-8. I don't think he is that high. Chafin, his injury chance is a 1, so it's a 6-12. Don't worry about Bimel because he's, he's left the game, so don't worry about him. So Gutierrez with the strikeout. And it's all up now to Brad Miller, lefty on lefty matchup. He is singled and hit into a double play. 3-7, and he's going to fly to center to end the inning. So Chafin did his job. He goes one inning, retires all three batters he faces. And we've completed seven here in Seattle. It is the Diamondbacks holding a 4-2 to lead over the Mariners. And we need a new pitcher for Seattle. As Bimel's day is done, with the right-handers coming up, they are going to a right-hander out of the pen. And it will be Mark Lowe who would later get traded to Toronto, but early on he stays with Seattle. So Mark Lowe will be your new pitcher. And on the season for Lowe, he's had pitched two innings, ERA of nine, no run, uh, no walk, I'm sorry, no wins, no losses, no saves. Two innings, uh, two innings of pitching, four hits, no walks, two strikeouts, and one home run allowed. And like I said, that's, those are his numbers in real life. So Mark Lowe is on for Seattle. He's probably got a high injury rate, so I need to do, do need to check that. Let's see. For Seattle, Mark Lowe. But actually, he would be with Toronto on the roster sheet. He's a 1, which is a 6-12. All right. Coming up for the Mariner, um, for the Diamondbacks, rather, Paul Goldschmidt. Goldie. Step into the plate. 0 for 3 with 2 Ks. He had a rough game. 6-11. Boy, we just missed that 6-12 injury. 6-11 is a fly ball right field X. That is Gutierrez. And he's a 3. 3 and a 2. That's going to be a base hit. Might be extra bases. A 3 and a 2 for a right fielder is a double. So it's a leadoff double for Goldschmidt to start the 8th. Because Gutierrez couldn't track it down. Leadoff double. And that'll send up A.J. Pollock. As the D-backs try to increase their lead, Goldschmidt will be held at second. Here's low. 4-10. That's a fly to left. Out number one. Big out to get there to get Pollock. And now Mr. Ofer, Jake Lamb. Seattle's certainly hoping this is not the time he's due. He's 0 for 27. Low to Lamb. 6-11, fly ball right field X again. And again, Gutierrez is a 3. That's a 12, most likely going to an error check for Mr. Gutierrez. And Gutierrez is an E5. E5. And that's a 7. E5 and a 7 is a 2 base. I'm sorry, no, it's right here. 6-11 is a fly ball B, my bad. Fly ball B, out number 2. Now I'm thinking, I'm trying to remember in advanced. For some reason I'm thinking fly ball B for the runner at second. You can go to third on that. I'm trying to remember. Let me pull out the rules to make sure I'm straight on that. Fly ball B, where are you? There it is, fly ball B. Runner at second may advance with this calculation, so it's not guaranteed. He's got a chance to move up. Goldschmidt runs at a 16. 
So it's a pretty good chance he's going to make it. 16, you add 2, it makes him an 18. Then you take the outfielder's arm, Gutierrez, which the minus 1 is a 17. So 1 to 17, he will make it. 18 and 19, he's got a hole, 20, he's out. But a 1, a 1 to 6 to 17, he's going to make it. And barely he does, but he does make it to third. So the fly to right does advance Goldschmidt to third base. There is out number two from Mark Trumbo. So Lowe needs to get Trumbo to get out of the inning. Five, four, ground ball, third base, X. That's Seeger. Seeger is a two. Two and a 10 is going to go to his error rating. Two and a 10 at third base. Definitely is an error check. And that's going to lead Seeger as an E16. And a 10. E16 and a 10 for a third baseman. That's a ground ball A, so he does make the play and keeps the score right where it is. Low, a shaky eighth inning, but gets out of it. That's going to be his only inning he's going to pitch. He will leave the game, and he'll get a new pitcher in after that. So we go to the bottom of the eighth. Chafin will be replaced, as he was a one-inning pitcher, so he will be replaced. And let's see who the D-backs want to turn to out of their bullpen. Looks like they're going to go to Daniel Hudson, the right-hander. Daniel Hudson, 4-3, and 3-8-6 three, three, ERA, 4 saves. He's going to try to hold the fort so they can go to their closer, Ziegler, in the ninth. So Daniel Hudson will be on. And on the replay so far, Daniel Hudson, 0-0, no saves, 6.75 ERA, but only three innings pitched, four hits, no walks, three strikeouts. So again, a lot of these numbers are taken with a grain of salt because the sample size is certainly not conducive to statistical accuracy. Hudson, on his injury check, let's get the injury for Hudson. Hudson checks in as a 1, which is a 612. So we need to avoid 612. And leading things off will be Ruggiano. But now we're into the part of the game that, since we're in the 8th, obviously you can use your bench players. So they're going to bring in Seth Smith. Seth Smith will pinch hit for Ruggiano. And, of course, he will stay in the game to play left field. So Seth Smith is in. Ruggiano is out. And they may pinch hit for Zanino as well coming up. We shall see. Most likely they will. Because Zanino is Mr. Ofer as well. All right, Seth Smith, the pinch hitter against Daniel Hudson. That's a 311. And that's a fly to right. Super advanced, you go to the split, but advance and stays right here on the triangle. That is a fly to right. And there's one away. So Seth Smith. Was trying to get something done, but couldn't quite get it done. And I forgot to mention he was hitting 344 on the season in 32 at bats, no homers, and two runs driven in, but fails in this case. And now we'll get a pinch hitter for Zanino. It'll be Dustin Ackley. And then Sucre will come in to catch, which will leave Bloomquist as the only position player remaining. So Dustin Ackley coming on to pinch hit. Dustin Ackley. And on the replay. Dustin Ackley is hitting 500. He's 5 for 10. No homers and one run driven in. See what he can do against Hudson. 5-8. And he strikes him out. So two down. Both pinch hitters fail, and now Sucre will come in and catch. At least Bluequist is the only bench player remaining for Seattle. Austin Jackson will step up with two outs, and the base is clear against Hudson. 3-6, he's going to strike out, so Daniel Hudson does a fine job retiring all three batters he faced, striking out two of them. 
We go to the ninth. It's still four to two, Arizona. And now we need potentially. It looks like we need, yeah we do need a new pitcher for Seattle. And also Sucre has to go in and catch. With Seth Smith moving to left field. And the new pitcher for Seattle is going to be Tom Wilhelmsen, a right-hander. Tom Wilhelmsen. Look at his numbers in real life. Wilhelmsen, 2-2 two two with a 3.19 ERA and 13 saves. In the replay, Will Helmsen is 0-0, no saves, 3.86 ERA. He's only pitched two innings. Again, with two hits, two walks, and three strikeouts. So, again, limited information and stats to worry about. Will Helmsen. Check his injury chances for Mr. Will Helmsen. Probably, probably a 6-12, but we'll see. No, he's actually a 2, which makes him a 6-11. 6-11 so is what to avoid. And for the D-backs, it'll be Pennington, who took over for, actually, I'm sorry, it'll be Ahmed. It'll be Ahmed, and then it will be Pennington, who took over for Owings. And now for some reason, oh, yeah, there's Ahmed, my bad. I was looking for Ahmed's card, just sitting right there. Duh. All right, Nick Ahmed against Will Helmsen. Start the ninth. 4-7, and that's a walk. Lead-off walk to Will Helm by Will Helms and to Ahmed. So Ahmed, who doesn't run that well, but he's on base. That's all that counts. Cliff Pennington's coming up, and he's an excellent bunter, an A bunter, so they're going to have him sacrifice bunt. He does become a B bunter with the corners in. So we'll roll for a B bunter. That's a 6, a B bunter, a 6. Batter's thrown up by third baseman. Runners advance. So a good sacrifice bunt. Five to four, and that moves Ahmed to second base, where he is in scoring position. With one out, and Jordan Pacheco, the batter. Pacheco's got a couple of hits, so he's filled in well for Ghost Switch in this game. 4-9, that's another walk, so Will Helms and his walk two in this game. And now here comes some lefties, and I believe Seattle's going to the pen again. They want to bring in some lefties. Will Helms and goes a third of an inning, faces three batters, but with these two lefties coming up, they will go to the pen for their other left-hander, Charlie Furbush. Furbush on the regular season was 1-1 one one with a 2.08 ERA and no saves. So let's bring Mr. Furbush in the game. Hate using both your lefties in the same game, but sometimes game situations dictate it. Furbush, 0-1, no saves, 5.40 ERA, only in two innings. One hit, no walks, no strikeouts, one home run allowed. So he's in there to face Enciarte with runners at first and second and one out, trying to keep the game at a 4-2 game and not let it get out of hand. 6-9 for Furbush. Make sure that's not an injury check as well. Furbush. It's a ground ball shortstop X, which the shortstop in this case is Miller. And Miller's a 3. 3 and a 6. Does that turn into a double play? 3 and a 6 for a shortstop. 3, and, I'm sorry, 3 and a 6 is a ground ball C, so the runners are going to advance. So it is a grounder to short, but it's one of those ones where both runners can advance. And now we'll check the injury, make sure there wasn't an injury on that result of 6-9. Furbush. Furbush, his injury chance is a 6. So an injury chance on a 6 is a 6-7. So he escaped that injury, but at 6-7 is right up there, can show up at any time. So two down, runners at second and third for Peralta. Got to get him here because you don't want to deal with Goldschmidt or Pollock. 
2-8, and he got him. Ground ball to short ends the inning. So Furbush did his job, keeping the score right where it is at 4-2. And now we go to the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the Mariners, and they'll have to do it against the closer, Brad Ziegler, for the Diamondbacks. Brad Ziegler will be coming on. And we'll check his numbers on the replay. After we check his real life stats, which are right there. Real life stats, he was 0-3 with a 185 ERA and 30 saves. Let's see what he's done in the replay. Ziegler. And Tabby wants to show up. I was hoping she would stay away during this game. But she, of course, wants to be in here. I think she's off camera, though, So, but she's right in front of me. Kind of in my way, but we'll, we'll try to get around it. All right, on the replay, Mr. Ziegler, 0-1 with a save and an ERA of 9. Three innings pitch, five hits. No walks, two strikeouts. So I'm going to try to keep Tabby out of the way if possible, but maybe out of my control. Ziegler, Tabby, come on. Come on now. Come on. Watch out. Come on, go up on, go up on there. Come on. Go on up there. Up there, Tabby. Good girl. Good girl. All right. Now we can finish this game in peace, hopefully. Ziegler, check his fatigue, or I'm sorry, his injury rating, which probably isn't very high. Ziegler is a 1, so it's a 612. Just have to worry about a 612. Ziegler is on. Looking for his second save, if he can secure it. But he's got to go through the heart of the order. Cano, Cruz, and Seeger. I mean, this is a grown man save right here. Although he does have a two-run lead to work with. 6-11. Just missed that 6-12. 6-11. Fly ball right field X. That's Enciarte. He is a one. One and a five is good all day long. That is a officially a fly ball B, but that's all they need. And there's one away. Cano is retired. And Nelson Cruz, the batter. So Arizona trying to steal one here in Seattle and prove to four and six and send Seattle to six and four. Here's Nelson Cruz. One seven, and that's a walk. So the tying run is now at the plate in Kyle Seeger. And on the real season, he had 26 home runs in 2015. So you definitely have to be careful. Cruz, obviously not being held on. No threat to run. 5-8. Ground ball second base X. Second baseman is now Pennington. He's a 3. 3 and a 6. This could be an inning, a game inning double play. 3 and a 6. A 3 and a 6 is a ground ball A. It's going to be a 4-6-3 double play. That is the fourth double play Seattle has hit into. And it ends the ball game as Ziegler is able to secure his second save and give the Diamondbacks a much-needed win over Seattle by the final score of 4-2. to two. Final line score, four runs, eight hits, and an error for Arizona. Two runs, just three hits, and two errors for the Mariners as they had a rough outing. We'll check the rest of the numbers as I get the computer going here and get to the final box score. All right, left on base, seven for Arizona, two for Seattle. Winning pitcher is Ruby De La Rosa. He gets his first win. He is now one and two. The loss to King Felix, he drops to one and two. And Brad Ziegler gets save number two. So there you have it. Game 49 in the books. The next game will be game number 50 in Tampa Bay where the Cincinnati Reds We'll take on the Tampa Bay Rays. But that's going to do it from here. Again, final score. Arizona gets the best of Seattle with a three-run seventh. Four runs, eight hits, one error, and seven left for Arizona. Two runs, three hits, two errors, and two left for Seattle. Winning pitcher De La Rosa is one and two. Loser Hernandez is one and two. And the save goes to Ziegler, his second. Until next time, enjoy playing whatever game you choose to play, how you choose to play it, and I will see you all down the road.